morning, Cardinals fans. I don't even know what else to say. First, though, I'm Tara Wellman. I cover the St. Louis Cardinals for birdsonthablack.com and right here on YouTube. I always try to keep you in the loop and entertained. As of late, the entertainment part has been a bit more difficult. So you'll find weekly series previews and mostly daily recaps, although life in my real job in sports television has been preventing a little bit of the daily content. But I will get here as often as I possibly can. But honestly... Talking about this team right now is tough, but this is about last night, so let's get to it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really wanna make this video. Not because I haven't missed all of you, because I have, but because the Cardinals are kinda bad, and I don't know what to say about it. Actually, to be fair, the Cardinals are perfectly average. Perfectly, uninspiringly average. And we all know that's not good enough. This weekend, the Cardinals hosted the Atlanta Braves, and as they have done all month, they picked up just a single win in the three-game series. Game one gave us the Dansby Swanson show, as he picked up a pair of two-run homers to topple Miles Michaelis and the Birds. Game two was the Mike Soroka game, which on paper meant that that was a game the Cardinals didn't stand a chance to win. Turns out they're not completely predictable. Now, just one run came off of the Young Braves' phenom, but the Cardinals scored in the fourth, in the fifth, and in the eighth innings to tally six runs on the day, of course, capped off by that majestic Jed Jerko three-run homer. And I gotta say, it's nice to see that he can still do that. That game was pretty complete all around. Dakota Hudson went six and a third, gave up two runs on five hits and two walks. Carlos Martinez followed him, and while he's looked a little less shut down than I'm sure we'd all like, he managed. Andrew Miller followed him and has actually been pretty good in this series. And then Jordan Hicks closed it out, finally getting a chance to do what he does in the month of May. A good win, a complete game, a chance to win their first back-to-back -back games in the entire month. That was what set up Sunday night. Early on, the Cardinals were cruising. Jack Flaherty looked as locked in as he has all season, and in fact, might have been as locked in as he's been in his entire big league career. He completed the night having walked none and held the Braves scoreless, a combination he had not ever done before. His slider had the right bite. His fastball had the right command. Not only was there no big inning, but no Braves runner even reached second base against Flaherty in his six innings of work. They tallied just three hits of any kind. Jack was brilliant. And the Cardinals offense was enough. Three runs on a night like that from Jack Flaherty should have held up. And it did hold up through two innings of John Gant and Carlos Martinez, and then it was Jordan Hicks on for the save in the ninth, all according to script. Except Jordan was apparently reading from a different scene in that script. Now, I contend that Jordan Hicks doesn't quite have the command that he needs because of how little he's pitched this month. But before a single out was recorded in the ninth inning last night, he gave up a Freddie Freeman double, a Josh Donaldson single, walked Nick Markakis, and then there was an Austin Riley RBI base hit that forced Hicks out of the game. In my mind, a batter too late, but not the point. With the tying run standing at third base. Good luck, Andrew Miller. I hope you've been practicing your magic tricks. The Braves would tie the game, but not take the lead, thanks to John Brebbia working around a walk to finally get the third out of the inning. But the damage was done. After the Cardinals had been soaring to a series win just like that, it was gone. And not only was the save blown, but the fact that they'd have to go into extra innings without Gant, Martinez, Miller, and Hicks was problematic from the jump. The top of the Cardinals order saw just seven pitches in the bottom of the ninth inning, and as the tenth got underway, it was Tyler Webb called upon to shut down the middle of the Braves' order. Spoiler alert, he didn't. Here's how that went. Single, walk, fly out. Intentional walk to load the bases, walk to score the go-ahead run. Tyler, buddy, pal. And that is the story of the St. Louis Cardinals failing to win a series for the seventh consecutive series. Yes, that is the entire 
month of May by dropping this one at four to three in 10 innings to the Braves. It's bad enough now that everyone wants someone fired. But y'all, I'm not convinced they could fix all of this by firing one person today. Look, they're an average team with a handful of above average players who still are playing below their own average standards. And this week they get the Phillies and the Cubs, both teams that are very much above average. The ship is sinking and tossing one guy overboard isn't going to save it. So happy Monday on that note. Speaking of the note, at least there's still hockey, right? Eventually that excuse is going to wear out and the Cardinals are going to have some serious splaining to do. Phillies on Tuesday. I'll see you then.